Hi, this is Mr. Reese, and this lesson is going to focus on arc length. Before we get started, I want to first go into a few vocabulary uh, words here. This here is a circle, and this would be the radius. The radius, remember, would be any segment that connects the center of a circle to any other point on the circle. So instead of just going here, it could, for example, connect from the center to here on the right, or from the center to here on the left. That's the diameter. The diameter is the longest segment that you can draw in any circle. It always goes through the center, and it essentially splits the circle in half. It should be noted that since the diameter essentially is just one radius connected to a second radius, that means that the diameter is always two times the radius. The idea of arc length is simply this. What you are to determine is how long just one piece of that circle is, like say that portion there, or say this portion. Any portion of the circle essentially, and we're only talking about the actual arc itself, not about the inside, which is about area. That's for some other video. Therefore, the arc length is actually based on the circumference, which is the term we use to describe the perimeter of any circle. That would be the entire distance around. The formula for the circumference is the diameter times pi. This is the most common one used. Uh, others may use 2 times the radius times pi. Just make a note that the diameter is always twice the radius, like we outlined a second ago. So you do not need to know both formulas, but uh, just know that if you're going to be using one formula versus another, you would have to remind yourself whether or not you're incorporating the radius or the diameter. Since the arc length is just simply a fraction or a part of the circumference, then all we have to keep in mind is that it's essentially going to have the same formula. The only difference being that we have a fraction of it, therefore what we do is we write a fraction and then multiply it to the circumference formula. The fraction is based on the central angle. Whatever the angle is, like say here if you wanted to determine this arc length, whatever the angle is here in the center, we would put that on top. 360 would be on the bottom for the fraction because 360 degrees is what it takes to go around in a complete circle. Let's say we do an example. Let's say we were asked to determine the circumference of this circle. These are the formulas for circumference and since we are given the radius I'll just simply use this. If you were to use this second formula here, the diameter times pi, you would just determine the diameter first which is which means doubling this length and then substituting that in. So using that formula we're going to plug in 12 right here. So that's 2 times 12 times pi. 2 times 12 is 24 and that would be the end result. However, what if you were not asked for the circumference in this case? What if instead you were asked to determine the length of this arc, AB? You could use your circumference here. Your circumference being 24 pi, all we would do really is just take a fraction of that. Since the central angle for this arc is 120 degrees, we would just simply write 120 degrees over 360 degrees. Then take this fraction and multiply to this and we're done. Or just use our formula. That's the formula for arc length. So what we do is we plug in the radius here which is going to be 12. Then right here is going to be 120 degrees. Then we would just go ahead and solve the rest. To solve the rest what you would do is you would do one of two ways. You could just simply multiply all these values together, then divide this by 360 for the end result. Or instead what you could do is you could have just reduced. Since 360 is on the bottom, 120 is on top, this reduces by 120 to become one third. 3 and 12 here they reduce as well to give you 4 and 1 then just multiply whatever's left. 1 times 2 
times 4 is 8. How about we try another one? Let's determine the arc length of AB. Only this time a slightly different setup here. What we, want, what we want to first observe here is that 45 degrees is written out here for the arc. Please understand this is very different than the arc length. What you're given here is an angle measure. So this is an arc angle, not an arc length. Whenever the angle is written out here, you'll find that more often than not, it just simply means that the angle inside is 45 degrees. So whatever the arc is written here, that means the central angle is that angle measure. Now recall that a straight line here is 180 degrees. So that remember the diameter cuts the circle in half. We're going to refer to that back in a second. Okay, let's go into how to solve this. We're going to first start off by writing the formula first. So the formula that we're going to use, hopefully you recognize it since 16, the radius is given. We're going to use the formula for the radius. And then we will plug in our values. 16 will go right here because that's R. The angle, though, is for the arc length that we want to determine. So from A to B is this particular arc, which means we need this angle right here. So we wouldn't write in 45 in for theta. We need to determine this angle here in the middle first. As stated before, this is a straight line. This diameter cuts a circle in half, so that's 180 degrees there, which means this. These two particular angles are linear angles. So if you take 180 and minus 45, we'll get what's left right there. That's 135 degrees. So we're going to write in 135 degrees right there. So substituting into our formula here, 135 for the angle, 16 for the radius. And now we can just go ahead and solve this. Keep in mind that that's not a variable. Pi is a constant, 3.14. We're going to leave that, though, as just pi. This is the remaining variable here, so all there is to do is just like before. We multiply across here and then divide by 360. So these multiply to give us 4320. Divide this through, and we get 12. So 12 pi is your solution. All right, how about we try another? Only this time, let's do a problem where we already know the arc length. Let's say we were to solve for x, x being the central angle here. We're going to write out in the same steps, starting with our formula. Now, we are given the radius, so we'll just write the radius formula again. And now let's go ahead and plug in the values that we are given. We are given the length of arc AB. It's 14 pi. So that's going to go here for L. Don't put it here for theta. Remember, that's for the angle. Only the angle goes over 360 degrees. The angle we don't know. That's X. So we're going to plug in X right here. This is the radius. So the radius will go right here. So here we are. And now we are ready to solve. To finish this off, we can do one of two things. What we could do is we could multiply out this denominator. It's a very common thing in algebra. So what happens is this. When you multiply both sides by this denominator, on one side the denominator reduces away. And then here you would just do the multiplication. So this part gives you 50, 40. This just leaves you with x, and then 2 times 18, which is 36, and then pi. So that's what you're seeing here, 36 times x times pi. To finish this off, just keep in mind that we want to solve for x right here. So what we do then is we divide out everything else. Since the 36 and the pi are multiplied to x, those are what we divide by. And what happens is it reduces out on this side. Here the pi's reduce out as well, but then you're left with this little division problem. So just divide that through, and you get 140. So 140 degrees was your angle, and that essentially does it. Now there was another way to do this, so let's back up a bit. 
Back here, what we could have done is instead of multiplying out this 360, we could have reduced. For example, 2 and 360 reduces to become 1 and 180. 18 and 180 also reduces. It reduces to 1 here and 10 here. So what you would have wound up with is this. You would have just had x times 1 times 1 times pi, which is just x and pi, and then on the bottom is 10. And then what you would do is, same thing, you would multiply out the denominator again, only this time it's a much smaller number. You'd multiply out the 10. So the 10s would simply go away, they'd reduce out, and you're left with 140 times pi. That's 140 pi. And then over here, you're just left with x and pi, which multiplies to give you this. Dividing out the pi's here would have finished off the problem. Okay, let's do one last example. Let's solve for x again. Let's start off before with our formula. In this particular case, we are to determine the length of the diameter, so we're going to use the diameter formula. The length of AB is given as 4 pi, so that's going to go here. The diameter is obviously x, so that will go here. So what about that angle? Well, the angle is not 60. To illustrate, I'm going to draw in this radius right here. Now, hopefully you recognize that if it's a 60 degree arc angle here, that's telling us that the central angle is also 60 degrees. That does not represent the arc angle for this particular arc here, which we, which we are given the length of. As stated before, a straight line makes 180 degrees. So what you have here is a linear pair of angles. So since 60 is one of them, so that makes this angle 120 degrees. So that's 180 minus 60 there. So let's go ahead and plug in 120 right there. And now we are ready to solve this. The remaining variable x is surrounded by all these values here, so we're going to need to move this to the other side. Let's first focus on our denominator and multiply it out. That reduces this out. Multiplying these two values together, we get 1440 pi. On the right hand side, that's just 120x times pi, because that's all there is. Okay. Let's go ahead and divide these values out, since it's 120 and pi being multiplied to x. Those will be the two values that we multiply out, or divide out. Pi's reduce out, as do the 120's. Over here on the left hand side, pi's reduce out, and you're just left with this division problem. And we get 12 for a solution. For an alternative way, just as we did before, let's back up. Instead of multiplying out the 360 degrees, we could have reduced this first. This reduces to 1 over 3. So what you would have been left with is this. Then, instead of multiplying out the 360, what you would be doing is just multiplying out the 3 instead. So you'd be reducing out 3 to give you this then just divide both sides by pi and we'd still get 12. So either way works. You can reduce first and then multiply out or you can just multiply out the 360 and then divide through. Either way would have gotten you the end result. And that's how you do arc length.